Faith here with your podcast, Welcome Toast. The 20-minute workout is recommended. Jog for two minutes, then pass out on the sidewalk for 18 minutes. Listen to our show in small bites or enjoy the whole thing. I got that sunshine in my pocket. Got that good soul in my feet. I feel that hot blood in my body when it drops. It's great to have you joining the party on the Faith Middleton Food Schmooze, inviting you to eat, drink, and be merry with us. What a show we have. We're nuts about corn on the cob. So we have great tips on corn, including one recipe we're inventing, at least by words, and then we're going to try it out. That's a corn BLT, believe it or not. Oh, uh, and we're going to work bacon into something else, uh, meaning corn and bacon pancakes. And this salmon that I keep making over and over again, it's amazing. Salmon with anchovy garlic butter. It is a knockout. And we have Blender Girl as our cookbook guest, and she's going to be talking about how to make fabulous things in the blender, including a daiquiri that I think you're going to oh, yeah. enjoy. Okay, my treasured food buddies are here. Senior contributors Chris Prosperi and Alex Province, and Robin Doyen Aiken is our senior producer. Hey, everybody. Hey. hey. Welcome to the show. Let's start with the salmon, because Good obviously, start. we none of us, we can't get enough salmon, it turns out. You say, no. oh, I'm not going to have salmon anymore, and then the next thing you know, it's on the grill, right? Yeah. Summer. And I don't know why. I eat it all year, but in the summer, I like it more. It's outdoors. You're yeah, it's out outdoors. Grilling it, <laughs> planking Plus, it. That little grill char yeah. is really makes it's sense. crispy it's bits easy. on the outside, oh, my yeah. favorite. Mushy on the inside. Oh, you know, I, just that, oh. I confess, Moist. I like mine slightly overcooked. Okay, oh, that's well, okay. any yeah. way you like it. Yeah. Okay, here is the recipe that has knocked me out. This is Melissa Clark of the New York Times. It is her salmon with anchovy garlic butter. When Ooh. I tell you... That if you've got someone who says, I don't like anchovies, you cannot tell what is in this. Chris, you're kind of waving oh, your hand. Oh, totally. When you mince it up, you yeah. can't taste it. It melts it, away. It's yeah. just flavor. And it adds this umami kind of savoriness. Rich. Yeah. Listen yeah. to how easy this is. This is on our website, foodschmooze.org. Oven is turned on, and then you just, just get a little bowl out, and you're mashing together with a fork butter anchovies, garlic, salt, and pepper. Those four things with a fork and butter, bang, 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 done. Now you've got a skillet on the top of the stove and you put a little of that anchovy butter in the skillet. Then you add your uh, strips of fish with a little skin on there and the fillets, skin side down, and you cook them in that big saute pan for three minutes or so. The skin browns up, and while it's browning, you're spooning some of those pan drippings right over the top of the fish Ooh, with the butter. as it's cooking. Mm. Oh. And then you have a little dish full of capers. You add those oh, now yeah. into the bottom of that saute pan, and you put the whole pan. So you want an oven-ready saute pan. Now the whole pan goes into the oven, and then you roast it for about eight minutes. Easy. Beautiful. And then when it comes out, you've got a little anchovy butter left over to the side. You've put that in the pan again, and now you start spooning that. Yeah, Chris, yeah. spooning oh, that oh, right oh. over the top of the mm. fish. It sort of melts Onto in people's there. plates yeah. it goes. Honestly, Heaven. I just made this for a crowd. And they really liked it. I'm just not the only one who and likes it. And it's those capers. It gives it that little brightness with each bite. Squeeze a lemon at the oh, end. Honestly, so... Melissa Clark yeah, is I a goddess her. to me. Straight out of the pan, I'd put it yeah. on one of your delicious salads. Yeah. On the arugula, yeah. let it like wilt, wilt everything sure down. Sure, you could. Sometimes the simplest is the best. We were talking about that the other day. You, you do too yeah. much sometimes and you get too many flavors. But that just has a couple of notes and... Just scream summer to me. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. just wanted you to know that that's there. And now, what do you say we all turn to corn? Because we are corn it's crazy on here. I love it. it it's is. corn time. I, I oh. always say, because it's straight <sighs> carbs and butter, I'm mm. going to go a little easy on the corn this year. Just in terms of calories, that never happens. No. That's just crazy It's about only it. a few weeks. You got to, what, maybe it's <laughs> September and it's over. Fiber. I think it's <sighs> about eight weeks, if I'm not mistaken. But Shh. Don't have to okay. tell everybody. All it's right, it's all a right. short period of time. Indulge. Mm. <laughs> so do you think we should do, we've got an oven roasted corn idea here for you that I think is such yeah. an amazing idea. I haven't tried this yet, but I found this in a blog and everyone writing in was crazy for this, how the corn was when it came out. We're talking about 50 people who made it and said, wow, this was really good to make it this way. 
Now, you know how we all like to praise our colleagues who are doing just Mm. tremendous Mm -hmm. work. So special congratulations to Cooks Illustrated. They always do such great stuff. This was their tip on the easiest ever way to shuck corn. So I immediately paid attention. And they said, now this is going to sound weird, but we have found the easiest way. What you do is you briefly microwave it and then shake it. Okay. Okay. (laughs) So (laughs) Wait, wait, um, what? (laughs) I I know. So here's what you do. You cut off the stalk end of the cob. That's the one with the pointy end, you know, not the silks. Yeah. So you cut that off just about, you know, past the first row of kernels. Okay. And then you microwave three or four ears at a time on a plate for 30, 60 seconds. Okay, not very long, in and out. Then you hold each, take it out, you yeah. hold each ear yeah. by the uncut silk end. Okay. You shake it up and down uh-huh. and the cob slips free. No yeah. way. Yeah, it works. No way. Yep, we do it. That's how we do it. Really? It's yeah, that you, easy? You cut it the just, stalk, yeah. yeah, and you just pull, you can help it and pull it, and, and it'll all Every slip piece right of cor- out. All kernels. That's it. All kernels. Why don't we know this? <laughs> Do you know how much pain and little, suffering I it have? It leaves a little silk behind, to be fair. A little bit of silk, but you just use you know fingers, and it just wipes Who away. Cares? I hate the silk, though. I, I like too. to get every I little bit off. Was, that's I what the too. butter, the stick of butter wipes yeah, it off. wipes it all off. But oh my God, <laughs> but that's so, how easy it is. You know, what do we works. always do? This We're is life out changing. There. I'm out there with a paper bag between yeah, oh my, my knees. God. And I'm sitting outside and I'm mm-hmm. stripping and I'm giving everybody's trying to take oh, a cop yeah. so nobody has the job. Okay. I like to sit outside and give my kids a bag to do all the shucking because then that can be their contribution to the What if the you don't have That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm out there hating it. <laughs> <laughs> it's kid work. For those yeah, you don't of you have who kids. do not have, have children. children. <laughs> Use the microwave. <laughs> that you are using as your sous chefs. <laughs> Um, Okay, so into the microwave it goes for 30, 60 seconds. Take them out and you hold the silk end and and just just shake up and down and the cob slips out with a little bit of silk on it. Robin and I don't like that part, but we just brush Brush it off. off. Done. So there you go. Probably one of the best tips of the entire summer. No kidding. I'm going to do that from now on. Some people cook the corn in the microwave, you know, the whole time. Yeah, you can. I've got a pet tip. Make sure that dogs do not get into your garbage can and eat the cob from the corn. It's one of the top reasons that dogs have to go to the vets to have surgery. They'll go into the garbage and mm. eat the cob part, and it gets stuck in their stomach. So oh, if you have pets know, around, yeah, know keep them away from the cob, you know, your picnics and everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here's cool. one more, another way of cooking corn. You Certainly we know it's on the grill. You know, you can boil it in the water. Some people do it in the microwave, as we just mm. mentioned. This is the tip that I found on a blog. This is what I was saying. All these people wrote in, and it is a simple oven-roasted corn on the cob. This is from Cypher Babe, who says, um, four ears of corn, let's say, and a couple tablespoons of butter. I don't know why that isn't four tablespoons of butter, but that's another matter. So your oven is up at 450 degrees, and you take off the husks and the silk. You know how. Yeah. Then you butter the corn, so you've got room temperature butter, obviously. You butter the corn and then wrap each one in foil. Place the foil on a cookie sheet so that when the butter drips out of the foil, which it always does, it's not going in the oven. And then you just roast it on that sheet for 20, 25 minutes. The thing that everybody answering said when they tried it, 50 people or so, they said, it's so much better than boiling in water. Oh, yeah, it doesn't yeah. have that slight sogginess. It has that oven roasty yeah. feel. And the butter sort of soaks in. I mean, really, diluted I it. think yeah. we, everybody, I as that. you are listening, mm-hmm. please, I, I think we should all, in this room, we should all try this. Yeah, I like that. And I, I'm sure you will as you're listening too. Give it a shot. I still love yours from last year, and I still do it. It's from your friend, and it's that caramelized corn where you just take the corn in the oh. pan, and in, that's in it. The, in the cast iron skillet? In the skillet. cast iron skillet, and I tell you, it is my favorite corn recipe. And so, Chris, say how to do it because you cut the corn off. Yeah, the... you cut the corn off the cob. Fresh. It, yeah, fresh. Just You don't have to do anything. Just cut it oh. up. I put it in a bowl and I heat up a cast iron skillet 
and I put just a teeniest little butter in it. You don't even mm -hmm. need to. I just put a little bit to just smear onto the bottom. <laughs> this is where we differ. Go yeah, ahead. Okay. And then I just throw the corn in and just Into on a Into the really hot, hot cast pan. iron stove. Yeah, and then you just kind of let it move around a little bit. Let it and sit for a minute yeah, too, right? Shake the yeah. pan. Shake the pan a little bit and just you start letting Here's it. Here's where oh. I start to add the butter. <laughs> yeah. Here's where. Now, after it's starting yeah. to get a little caramelized, uh -huh. now we're adding in the butter. A little bit at a time. This is not my recipe. No. This is the recipe of Roma Baron and Judge Emily Olshansky in mm -hmm. New York. And that's another way to do it. Never have leftovers. I've made this for friends, family, and I'm telling you, there's you look around Sweet, like, where did it all go? I did 10 years. Where did it all go? <laughs> Robin, how do you do your corn at home? Well, we boiling do, water? We do the boiling water. And then even though I love corn on the cob, really what I'm looking forward to is making corn salad later. Uh, so with all the leftovers, I have a tip from fine cooking. I use a bunt pan because you know how when you cut the kernels off of a cob, they kind of shoot all over the place. So I learned from fine cooking years ago that I should be cutting the kernels on a bunt pan and then all the kernels just shoot off into your pan. You put the corn into the hole? Yes. <gasps> Yeah. Oh, that's another genius idea today. Wow, yeah. that is and wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then later, I like to mix those kernels with cherry tomatoes oh, sure. and mint yeah. and cheese, a little feta yeah. or something, and it, I'm all about the corn salad. Yeah. Okay, we've got one for you then, because I wrote to Chris last night, mm -hmm. <laughs> to me before yeah. the show, all the time. I write these crazy yeah. things. No, this is not crazy. This is genius. Uh, well, I said, let's together on the show, and I invite the two mm -hmm. of you also, Alex. Alex and Robin to join in this. And maybe as you're listening, you could join in this too. I want to make a BLT corn. Yep. What, because corn like and bacon, already. they go, of course, it's fabulous together. Tomatoes, love yeah. it. Uh, yeah. Why not chop lettuce? So now we could do a, a BLT salad with cor you know, yeah, corn salad. I've done that. Or we could use big lettuce leaves and do the BL yeah. inside. Oh. And do inside the lettuce leaf, and that would be a great okay, with the bacon. That's bake. the one. Take your corn kernels, mm -hmm. yeah. cook chopped bacon, yeah. right, yeah. and and cherry tomatoes, and you put it in a bowl and you mix that up, season it with a little salt and pepper. I think and, a little lime juice. Yeah, a little lime juice or balsamic vinegar, and something butter. to give it a little zip. Yeah, a little butter. Yeah, sure. And then oh, we haven't cooked it yet. No, okay, no, no. But I wouldn't cook it. I would oh. just leave it fresh like that. And then I love your idea of taking romaine heart leaves mm -hmm. and making them like little boats. Okay, fill the you know boats. What? I saw. I can't take credit for that because I yeah. saw someone doing something with corn and lettuce leaves but online. I love that idea. So I'm, but I don't want to no, take no, credit No, 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 you don't have to take credit for it, but it's oh, a great... Inspired. I'll yeah. eat it. <laughs> no, and then you can just like eat it like a taco. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do you see that? That's what? great. So raw, fresh, raw sure. corn. Sure, yeah. and people don't Wait. understand, you can eat raw corn like Yeah, why not? What is to yeah. prevent us from doing the real BLT thing? And then what would we put it in? So it could be on a bun. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about chopping up iceberg lettuce, really mm -hmm. a real serious chop, mm -hmm. pretty fine. And then putting lots of bacon in, mm -hmm. corn, and cherry tomatoes cut in half. Mm -hmm. Maybe a squeeze croutons. of... Right? It needs Ooh, croutons. Yeah. I think. That's Wait, bread. Yeah, to like have yeah. this BLT be reimagined as a salad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you put in lime and mayo. Yep. Mayo. Okay, yeah. Yeah. and then the mix them. it right. up, <laughs> and then onto a, a, a uh, hamburger bun, hot dog Potato bun. Potato roll. Mm. I'm saying a wrap. A wrap? I'm you taking a, a tortilla wrap. wrap, Okay. and then you roll it all in there, and you can eat it with your hands Why can't like we that? throw a lobster claw in at this Sure, point. make it a lobster BLT. <laughs> I'm saying toasted <laughs> hamburger bun, a oh. little butter, toast them in a skillet or on the grill, buttery, mm. and then whoo, yeah. we gotta write this a lot up. of bacon. I like this. Okay, we're I gonna, really, we're gonna really figure like this. this out. I saute yeah. it in bacon fat. And we yep. want... <laughs> <laughs> and we want you to make up your own recipe. <laughs> Join us, in fact. Wait, wait um, before you go, let's do. Let's take the bacon, right, and mm -hmm. chop it up and put it in the pan, in the cast iron pan, mm -hmm. cook it, render out the fat, cook it all the way, remove it, and then take our corn there and caramelize go. it in, in the, the bacon fat, fat mm -hmm. like what you were just saying Ooh. in the old the, the way we did it last year, mm -hmm. and then throw in your chopped cherry tomatoes, mix it in with the bacon again, then throw in your lettuce, and then put it on a hamburger 
<gasps> with a little mayonnaise and lime juice. We, uh-huh. You know what? The lettuce could just stay whole. Why am I yeah. chopping it? No, because I like the it... shredded lettuce. Instead of mayonnaise, <laughs> for the white, I would use maybe heavy cream. Just to, It gives it you know, sort of the watered down <laughs> oh, liquid. Like creamed so corn almost. Bread. This is Texas yeah. roots coming But this out. is like creamed corn, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little like sugar. <laughs> yeah. Salt, pepper. Mm. All right. Well, So many possibilities. Hey, can I get you to join us on Facebook? Because I, this is what I want to know. We're getting to the time of the favorite corn stand. Mm-hmm. When I'm on the road, I love corn so much. If someone has said to me, I know a fabulous place to get corn, and I'm anywhere in that region, I will go to that corn stand. So mm-hmm. please talk with us right now on Facebook. It's Faith Middleton Food Schmooze on Facebook. All right. And um, tell us where you go. And if you've got a special corn recipe, say it to us. Or if you've got an idea, by the way, for our BLT corn, lay it on us. Whatever way you want to participate on the corn thing. Or send we're us at one. We'll <laughs> yeah, <laughs> send us samples. <laughs> Faith Middleton Food Schmooze on Facebook. Chris, right. where I, do you get your corn? I did a side-by-side with other places because I didn't want to be one of those people that say, no, the best corn's here. I wanted to try it. So last year at the end of the season, I went and got a half dozen ears from a couple places, and I compared it with the one I always use, which is Young's Farm and Granby. We did it blind in the kitchen, <gasps> and what oh, happened? my God, everyone said, what is about this one? You know what? Mr. Young has this love for the corn that I swear translate through the ground he won the into the corn. Yeah, mm-hmm. like and it's sweeter, about, crisper. Yeah, it's not just, so it was just a tad bit sweeter, just a tad bit crispier. It's yeah, Young's, Young's farm. farm in Granby, Connecticut. I have to get it, a he's got a little, to go yeah, to the and it's area. it's a little stand on the side of the road. He always has corn, and let me tell you, the corn is to die for. If there is a way to eat the corn on the same day you buy it, yes. please, please do. Yeah. Ideally, you're hoping that the farm has picked it the same day you're buying it. There is just nothing better than same day corn. Oh. Okay. Mm, heaven. Mm-hmm. So this is good. Anybody else? Robin, where do you go for your corn? Where is around supermarket? Or? I go to Arisco's Farm in Cheshire, Connecticut. How do you spell that? A-R-I-S-C-O. They are right down the street from my house, and they have great corn and tomatoes, and you can't go and get one and not the other, so <laughs> that's where I go for corn and tomatoes. That sounds good. I'm sandwiched between two amazing places, Coles in Madison and Jake's on the Madison-Guilford border. I know that and they place. Are my, I grew up I know going there. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you do? Well, as a kid, 50, my 50? mom would send me to Jake's to go. You know, he's on the side of the road. And then Cole's always on the Ooh, way he's home. He's really on the side of the road. No, like literally on the <laughs> no, side No, I mean, you really take your life in your hands to go. But but it is really good. Yeah. Corn. How do you decide, though? I'd hate to have two that I love because then you're like, which one? <laughs> Wherever you're closer. <laughs> Wherever you're closer. <laughs> the corn changes from year to year, obviously, mm-hmm. because of weather conditions, soil conditions, water conditions. Most weekends, I'm on the North Fork of Long Island, and there is a place called Seps, and I mostly go there. We, there's a big debate on the North Fork of Long is Island. There, about a who has the best corn. <laughs> it's a fight, actually. <laughs> but who has the best corn? I like Seps because I like with sweet. Corn. Yeah. I like it with a lot of sugar forward. Yeah. You know, it's good. With the butter, it's just oh, I don't salt. know. When you were saying it, it's always different every year. I kept saying, yeah, but how come when I take that first bite like I did this year, how come... I always say, oh, my God, the corn is better this year than ever. Yeah. And oh, yeah. I remember <laughs> saying that go back and going <laughs> yeah, back 20 right. years. Oh, it's yeah. better this year. I think I could eat corn every night. <laughs> All right. You think we're done with corn, but we are. There's no way we're done with corn. We have a lot of corn stuff to talk about. In fact, I'm going to tell you about corn in your pancakes coming up. All right. Right after this. More mouth-watering conversation and fun ahead on the Faith Middleton Food Schmooze. And I hope you will make a charitable contribution to Feed the Hungry. We're online now at foodschmooze.org. And we'll be right back.
Cornbread said, now that's all right. Bean. Meet me on the corner tomorrow night. You can sign up for our free podcast copy of the show. That's really what it is. That will arrive in your inbox every week. You just sign up once at foodschmooze.org. Schmooze like school, S-C-H-M-O-O like the cow, Z-E. You think that sounds crazy, but that's how everybody remembers it. (laughs) S-C-H like school, M-O-O-Z-E. Foodschmooze.org. My treasure food buddies are here. Senior producer Robin Doyan Aiken, Chris Prosperi, who chef and co-owner of Metro Beast Restaurant in Simsbury, Connecticut, and wine broker Alex Province of Hartford. Okay, here we go. You can't believe what we have coming. We're going to tell you about the corn pancakes, and there's a secret ingredient in there. You just can't even imagine what that might be. And uh, we have a special white wine to tell you about, a Sauvignon Blanc that is so fresh for the summer. We have a genius, when I say genius idea for how to cook boiled corn for a crowd, Seriously, it's so smart, I can't even believe it. This is a tip. First, I have to tell you, I'm going to get to the pancakes in a second. Remember I said hats off to Cook's Illustrated for giving us that thing. They did this feature on corn. There were two things in that list that so knocked me out. You, you've heard the first one. The microwave. Crack. About how to 30, 60 seconds in the microwave, shake okay. the corn cup, and, the and it falls and the out. Boom. Okay, here is their tip on boiled corn for a crowd. I never thought what about that. What do you that. think like, they do? Yeah, you, you know, suddenly, I'm thinking yeah, bathtub. I'm always yeah. just yeah. throwing. And you're, pushing, you know, and you're like squeezing a... it in there, which isn't good because the water gets cold and then it takes a long time to come up to a boil. So what do they do? Yeah. So they themselves found this online. Somebody wanted to cook 24 ears of corn at a time. Okay. And what? so what did they do? They dragged out a large cooler... Okay. And they put 24 ears of corn in a 50-quart cooler. Uh, they poured enough boiling water over yeah. it to cover the corn sure. by one inch. Close they the closed top. the close lid the for 45 minutes, and, and the corn was Perfect. done. Stays I'm hot. sorry, Genius. but whoever online, whoever they're sourcing, yeah. deserves some kind of award. Yeah. I don't know Two what. normal-sized pots car. of water, and boom, you're done. Right? You can have that on your stove. Simple. Isn't two regular something? pots of water, and I you know. fill the cool because it, it doesn't take a but lot of water. But you only have to cover by an inch because yeah, you, you stack them yeah. on the bottom low. Uh-huh. Is that just you so drive smart? Drive into a picnic. That is. Yeah, yeah. you take it with in the you. car. You oh get to God. wherever you're going. Well, you know, <laughs> you can. Carry it carefully. That's right. That's, <laughs> ca- that's car road food. Yeah. You just wrap up the corn in aluminum foil and put it around the end. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, and then I, you dry. I like this too because you can. You don't Pop have corn to, out the tailpipe. <laughs> you don't have to take the corn out of the water. You can uh, then open the bottom valve yeah, of your cooler drain and drain the water right oh, out of the cooler, wow. and it's corn still hot. In fact, in the you cooler. could just uh, throw sticks of butter in. Oh, that's and just sort of, and you grab an end and just start. Re- Jumping up and down with it to sort of mix it in there. Tossing. <laughs> little salt and pepper. And everyone has butter, buttered corn. Bacon. Yeah. A butter yeah. dispenser. Tomatoes. I love corn okay. season. All right, Can you tell serious. we love corn Come on, season. i got to straighten up. I love butter fly too. right here. Um, okay, here's corn and bacon pancakes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, cruising online, as I said we do. I was cruising all over the place, and I saw a recipe someplace for... You make a regular pancake batter, however you like to make it. So we don't need to get really complicated. You don't need to write anything down. You could do this right off the top of your head. Mm -hmm. And if you get our podcast, you could listen. Or you can go into our archive and say, I want that one where they talked about how to do this. The corn and bacon pancakes. Corn and bacon. One of the best matches on the planet Mm -hmm. if you're somebody who eats meat. So you take a half a cup of crumbled cooked bacon, several strips, probably about six strips, makes a half a cup. And you put in a couple cups of pancake batter and then the corn. 
And there you go. You put in the quarter cupful into your hot buttered skillet and you make pancakes and you've got corn and bacon inside every pancake. Oh I love God. that. Of course That's you could idea. sprinkle it on the top. On the, a little corn and bacon corn, on top. On top too. as a kind of Save garnish. Save a little bit. You could yeah. do but that. But you're still serving but it's it with. It's really so fun. Oh, yes. Well, now the question. Syrup. Butter I've, and maple syrup. Well, butter for sure for yeah. me. The question is maple would syrup. you put maple syrup totally. on that? I would. I, I like it across bacon. blueberry maple syrup. Against the salt, I like it. I'm a of dragger. The bacon. If I have pancakes and bacon on the same plate, I always drag my bacon over to where there's a little pool of maple <laughs> syrup and sort of just give it a little dip. Yeah. And then I eat my bacon because I'm telling well, you, bacon make... with a teeny bit of maple syrup Maper's on it. Maple flavor ba- They make maple yes. flavor bacon. Yeah. Oh my God, it's so good. So yeah, Sounds I'm in like with a diner. The... Butter and maple syrup. <laughs> um, who's the cream corn person on this show? I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's yeah. pointing I, at Alex. I never, I never say no to it. <laughs> yeah, why, why would you? <laughs> it's so good, isn't it? And especially when it's a little bit tiny on the sweet side with yeah. maybe just a touch of heat in there. Oh. The biscuit off Okay, the how side. do you do it? How do you do it, Alex? I don't know. I just eat it. You just, oh, so you go to people's houses <laughs> oh, and eat yeah. it I mean, in restaurants. We make it at the restaurant. We just take corn and put it in a pot. Pour Little it heavy. milk, butter, no, we salt, do, we do heavy cream, salt, and pepper, and just on a very medium, low simmer, just let it simmer until it thickens. And Little sugar, brown sugar. Uh, we don't need to heavy because the corn cream, right now is so sweet. Salt and pepper. And that's and it. With the corn kernels Kernel. stripped from the cob. Yeah, put it in a pot. Add and a then how much? A cover. little cream. Little to cream, cover? just just lightly cover, and then you just simmer. Lightly cover. Yeah, That's a like, lot of cream. I know. <laughs> He's but, trying to make it sound I so know, small, but it's <laughs> just a teeny just amount a, of just a gallon of, of cream. Yeah, core pine, <laughs> core. Tiny gallon. <laughs> Listen, it, you know, I tell kind. I tell people this all the time when they're Little like, "Wow, well, hey, that cream. was the best cream corn I ever had." And I say, yeah. "Thank you," thinking to myself, "I know you don't make this at home because you wouldn't put the whole corn in there." How do you? <laughs> wait a minute, though. How do yeah. you? Um, so you let it sit and simmer until it thickens. Until it thickens, yeah. and then there's your green corn. You're gonna finish it with a little butter if you want to get indulgent. Are you sure? You sure? Pulse it's it like in the blender. Sort of yeah, potatoes. you can. Yeah. Re- oh, I like it chunky, so I don't yeah. even pulse it. Mm-hmm. I keep it whole. But you could, you could take half of it, put it in the blender, and then dump it back, and then it gets nice and. I have an idea. Yeah. Let me just see. This is crazy. I know it's crazy, so I'm going to start with that. <laughs> but is it possible to put polenta into it? And have it be almost oh, like, like a... Like cereal. Mm-hmm. Like cream um, of Well, corn. I mean, yes, to have mm-hmm. it be a little... Um, what would we call it with polenta in there? We, I mean, uh, we do this every year with grits, which is basically yeah. thicker cut polenta. Yeah, yeah. We make polenta, and then we throw corn grits. and bacon in it, and then a little butter mm-hmm. and cheese, and we mm-hmm. serve that with fried chicken every yeah. summer. And oh, it's a great oh summer God. dinner. Maybe? You could, really? but we just keep it more southern style. Peppered well, gravy on top? Come well, on. That's your food, Alex. With the polenta, to me, that makes it breakfast food. Oh, sure. You know, But I will have it with fried chicken, too. I think I'm thinking oh, with I, you, Because don't you have chicken. polenta with dinner sometimes? Mm-hmm. I do. Oh, yeah, totally. I, you know, especially the cherry grit, mm-hmm. grits. I love yeah. that. I love my mashed potatoes a little well, all the gravy, corn beside it, and <laughs> mix it all together like... <laughs> So this would be so, the same thing, chicken. except minus so the mashed potatoes. when you're potato. at Young's Farm picking up your fresh corn, he also grinds polenta grits. I was going to say, right? I, he have, has the I have corn. his ground, polenta? ground yeah. you know, yeah. polenta corn, corn his yeah. cornmeal, and it's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. So it's corn. I made it's the amazing kind of corn. cornbread yeah. with it. Yeah, he, he, so he has the flint corn on one side and the sweet corn on the other side mm-hmm. of the field, and mm-hmm. he grows both. And the wow. flint corn okay. he grinds for you right there so on the So flint. Flint corn, yeah, that's the southern corn they make grits with. And in Italy, it's a similar corn that they make polenta with. Do you think corn has a flavor? Oh, yeah. Yeah, corn. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> no, I yeah. mean, besides, yeah, besides, sweet. besides its sweetness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And but the, the, you know a lot of people would say there's a neutrality to corn, and uh, then what you know other people will say it's actually the corniest corn <laughs> is the corn that has little multicolored kernels in it because like that is the, a, a descendant of the real corn yeah. that Native Americans and, ate. And, Mr. and it's the best and for Young's, you health wise. Yeah, and Young's Farm has their polenta. It has a little bit of that red corn in it. Mm. And you see the little flecks when you hold up the bag mm. in the light. You see the little flecks of I red. I didn't in notice it. that. Oh, it's so good. Mm. Uh, and when you say corn flavor, so that's where it is. So when you take the corn that he grows for the grits and the cornmeal, you, you it's, a, it's a corn that's starchy and doesn't have a lot of sugar. So when you make the polenta with it and you taste it, and we're talking like 
Oh my God. The other thing too is we take it and boil it in lime but, but and let's make take... tortillas out of it. Oh. That's where that corn flavor just. Oh. So you're not having any sweet because but, that's not but, a sweet but let's corn. Let's talk about anybody's corn. Mm -hmm. So anybody's corn, whether it's in the supermarket or from your mm -hmm. corn stand locally, and don't forget, we're talking about this right now on Facebook. So it's Faith Middleton Food Schmooze, those four words. Faith Middleton Food Schmooze. Go on there and tell us where you're getting your corn oh, at yeah. your corn stand yeah. so that we can go to A, B, help corn the farmer. <laughs> e, and sometimes the supermarket will have, you know, you hit it right sure. and local they've got corn. incredible corn yeah. if they've bought it locally. They you kind of hope they're corn. that smart. And yeah. then so there's that. And if you've got ideas about, you know, what you make with your corn that we might not have thought of or you have an addition, sugar or no sugar, whatever you want to say, weigh in on the corn conversation. Faith Middleton, food schmooze. Okay, any corn. What do you think? Is it neutral in flavor and it's the butter and the salt? I don't think so. And the inherent sweetness, the way they're breeding the corn now? Matt's grandpa, when we grill it, used to say, like, this corn's so sweet, you don't even need salt or butter. You know, they love, like those old timers, they just love it without anything. <laughs> it does be, just, so yeah. so uh, <laughs> how about you were saying, Alex, that you didn't want to have butter? Well, no, as much. As be as honest. Much. <laughs> you want to have butter, it lasted but you for an hour. Have butter. <laughs> no, you know, it's it's, over it's, it's bathing yeah, suit now. season. I'm trying. Yeah. You know, there's times when you're trying to cut back on fat, so I'm I'm looking for alternatives other than a half a stick of butter. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm so no, you, it's I a mean, good idea. Like, like, like some people yogurt, for yeah. health yeah. reasons olive oil, also. Olive oil. Maybe. Yeah. So olive oil. Um, some people will saute a little bit of garlic in the olive oil. Oh, that's good. And then they've got garlic oil and. And they use that on the corn. And some people love corn on the cob with, mm -hmm. with garlic. Oh, that's good. Other people will do a, just a, that Mexican thing of a slight grating of the Mexican cheese. Cheese. Mm -hmm. What is that called? I don't remember. Queso fresco. Queso fresco. Yeah. And what's the little spice you put on it? Oh, tajin. Ah. Yeah, the chili So pepper. that's a lime, dried lime yeah, and salt and powder. Chili. But, you, but you could use lime zest yeah, on your sure. corn, totally. too, if you want Squeeze to. Squeeze lemon or lime. Or cayenne, little cayenne. cayenne. Yeah, these are all good ways so to get flavor oil. with, uh, get flavor boosting without using butter yeah. so it's butter or olive oil there must be something else that would oh, be good I mean, to put on to, to schmear on the cob what are we talking yeah. so about what are we talking for about for people who can't schmear, have butter and you want to schmear it on the eat a whole corn and we corn want the cob. corn to be good yeah. and we want to and, but it's like not juicy and yeah and so it's not about that much fat yeah because now olive oil will be better for some people health wise than mm -hmm. butter will be yeah so what would we do? So what's the coconut everyone's using, the coconut oil? Yeah, coconut oil is a good, but coconut oil is high, but coconut oil is high in fat, too. It. So it's it's not really that different from butter as far as calories, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful there. Mm -hmm. even, even olive oil too much is not, right? That's still got the calories. Can we use ghee? <laughs> That's just clarified butter. Come on, that's yeah. just it, that's yeah. clarified butter. There's nothing, nothing that's just a fancy name for butter. And it, it has a, a yeah, me. but it has less cholesterol, right? Yes, it does. I looked yeah, it up, yeah. and it it also has a flavor, a strong flavor. And you yeah. might, some people might not want that in the corn. Yeah. Because we're so used to butter. You know, I would say do the same thing you do with chicken and other meats when you can't have... People will use go the herb route. So I would just sprinkle on the either the dried or the fresh herbs on the corn on the cob to make mm -hmm. it great. So just you could do some chopped cilantro. You regular. could do a million dried herbs. So... I think, too, though, is if you're going to do it without the butter and you're going that, then what you said earlier is so much more important about getting it fresh, making sure it was picked that day. And then, like you said, your old timers do, you don't need anything yeah. on it, right? So That's more important than um, when you're not putting butter and salt on it than if you're going to slather it with butter and salt. Yeah, you still want it fresh, but it's not as important if you're going to eat it plain mm -hmm. with nothing on it. Make sure you just go and almost pick it off the <laughs> off the stalks we'll grill yourself. It. So you know how you say grilling, Alex? Yeah. That's yeah, a great idea. That's flavor. Caramelizes mm. it. You Smoky. know how you say, oh, no, no, I have to have butter or something on my corn. I'm not going to eat it plain. But what happens when you're in the refrigerator prowling around? You come upon that ear of corn that's been left over from the picnic the night before tell me you don't pick it up and just start chomping on it no, you do it and it has no butter <laughs> there's nothing on it or like it robin said when good. she takes it off the cob and makes salads with it you're that's not mixing do. butter with it you're just chopping it up and putting on a salad all right we have a wine to tell you about i, I want to talk about corn forever because we could come up with 50 more recipes but <laughs> Easy. we're going to keep talking with you on facebook too at faith middleton food schmooze 
at Facebook. Okay, we've got a wine discovery, and this is a very good Sauvignon Blanc for about $14 a bottle. Alex, go ahead. You tell us, because it's your discovery. This is going to be about corn wine. <laughs> so, <laughs> it would be really good so in fun, corn. You know, we're always saying French wines are so hard to read. Mm-hmm. Finally, one that's easy to read. So... It's Chateau Simon. That's the producer. And it looks little... like Simon, people. Yeah. Chateau call... Simon. Simon. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So it has a little chateau on the on the label, and it says Bordeaux. But finally, they say Sauvignon Blanc. So Simon. they tell you what it is. Mm-hmm. And so Bordeaux is just a little region on the other side of the Pyrenees from Spain. And it's 100% Sauvignon Blanc, no oak, so it's crisp and clean and citrusy. And we're talking about corn, so all I'm thinking, this is like picnic wine. You'd have it in a bucket of ice. Oh, yum. Oh, yeah. Clean all the butter out of your mouth. Sometimes Sauvignon Blanc can be too heavy on the grapefruit flavor, at least for me. They can go too far, like putting too much oak or too much butter flavor in the wine. So you want a little tiny bit of balance so you're not hit over the head with a baseball bat. So this is that. This has just a beautiful, gentle, grapefruity thing going on. If you're worried about sugar, it's a Bordeaux sec. That means there's no sugar in the wine. They allow the yeast to eat every single gram of sugar that's in there. So you end up with a wine. If you like dry wine, that is bone dry. Technically, there's zero sugar in here. So you're just tasting the minerals and smelling the aromas of grapefruit. Good, good. And Around 14? Yeah. Okay, yeah. and we have it at the website. It is um, foodschmooze.org. We see a picture of the label, the cost, and what you say at your wine store. We always say call ahead. Wine stores can't stock everything, but they should be able to get it. It's a good wine store, I mean, large enough. But even your small places, within 24 hours, they should have it to you if, if you don't call it late at night. So I really like this. Would you drink this with corn on the cob seriously oh, yeah. with the butter yeah what's the play there well so because it's so crisp and clean butter you know is fun to eat but coats your mouth so you have all this fat in your mouth and then you need a wine that's clean and crisp because as you take a sip it's it's citrusy so it washes out the fat and then makes you want another bite of corn with Anything. butter on it <laughs> also i would have i certainly have, would have shellfish with this in about five oh, seconds yeah. you know oysters I'll, yeah. i would the turn this into sangria i would really this is just sitting out on the patio yeah. wine too the grilled or, salmon we were talking on the about step. before it's summer wine yeah. it's just no oak so it's fresh and re- refreshing and we've got blender girl coming up i'm telling <laughs> oh, yeah. you she's coming she's our next guest you're going to hear this and we've got a gazpacho that is just terrific. And we tried. We just ate it. And um, there's a daiquiri that she makes in the blender. And this minty pea concoction that's like a soup that is just terrific. Lots and lots of things in her cookbook. We love the local. Please support your local food growers and food makers. For our podcast, sign up once at foodschmooze.org. And don't forget, we're talking corn right now on Facebook at Faith Middleton Food Schmooze. We'll be right back. My baby and a bottle of wine, Joe. My baby and a bottle of wine. Chuck in the corn, chuck in the corn. You bring down that thing since the day you were born. You just lay around the shade all day. Chuck in the corn. Talking down your fellow man. Ain't no way to fill your frying pan Like you ought to shut your mouth, son Instead of shucking the corn Let me be your blender, baby Don't you know I can whip, chop, and puree? Won't you let me be your blender, baby? Honey, I can whip, chop, and puree. I'm gonna whip you to a jelly, honey. I'm gonna chop it up today. This is the Food Schmooze Party, offering the richness of life and coming to you in Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New York. 
New York, including Westchester County, the east end of Long Island. That means the, the Hamptons, the North Fork. The senior producer is Robin Doyon Aiken. And to hear the show on WNPR, it airs Thursdays at 3 and Saturdays at noon. Podcasts and our curated recommendations are always online at foodschmooze.org. We're going to talk now with somebody, as promised, that we refer to as Blender Girl. (laughs) She has done this cookbook called The Perfect Blend, and these are 100 blender recipes. And they're meant to energize, to revitalize, and we're talking about Tess Masters. We're going to say hi to her in just one second. These end up being, just by the nature of what goes in a blender, gluten-free and vegan, Chris, you made, and all the recipes we're talking about are at our website, thanks to the generosity of Tess, pineapple cucumber gazpacho, which would be great on something, right? Oh, yeah. I thought, like, swordfish. I was thinking shrimp, salmon. I said pork chop, I think. Pork chop, sure. On the grill, maybe? All right. So pineapple cucumber gazpacho, fresh pineapple diced, lime zest, lime juice, minced jalapeno, diced cucumber, chopped cilantro, chopped green onions, extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper, and you could add other things if you wanted. How did it come together? So you chop up the pineapple. You reserve a little bit because you're going to add that to it later. So you leave a couple cups to the side and you throw the pineapple into the blender with the zest from the lime, the lime juice, and the jalapeno zap that puree it it becomes this i called it liquid gold because it has this amazing color and the aroma little chunky no it purees super but i had some chunks that i love see now the chunks are coming next okay okay so you got that in the blender then in a bowl or a container you take your chopped up cucumber your cilantro your green onion a little bit of the olive oil you mix that up and then you pour the first part, the blender, into it and mix oh, that up. Oh. And if you're using the turmeric and the ginger, you can put that in the blender those with are, the first ingredients. Those are sort of Boost. flavor boosters And I, and I did use them because I thought the ginger and the good. turmeric are good for you yeah. and it adds a little yeah. zip. Oh, and that's it, We've right? Got to Adjust talk with to salt test. done. Test, <laughs> test, test masters. Blender girl. <laughs> Official welcome to the Fooch Moose Party. <laughs> Thank you for having me. You're originally from Australia? Yes. From Melbourne. Oh, yeah. Beautiful spot. Okay. So have we pretty much covered this gazpacho? Can you think of other ways that we could use this besides on <laughs> on uh, pork chop, on shrimp, on swordfish? Yeah. It's so funny because I get those emails constantly from people saying that they used it in all kinds of other ways. I mean, there are even people that drained off the liquid and put it on toast. No. Oh. And, you know? Pizza. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can use it. I mean, I just think it's really refreshing. There was a recipe in my first book that was a smoothie and it turned out to be one of the most popular smoothies in the book and so I thought you know what we've got to like people kept asking you know I really just want to eat that in the chunky form I love gazpachos because they're full they're fresh they're really refreshing in the summer and they're just really dimensional in flavor it's true at this time of year you really start to want this I like bright food all year long, but in the summer, of course. Let me move to now, this is also at foodschmooze.org, where there is information all about Tess and this book. If you are interested in more of her recipes, this is an avocado daiquiri. This is such a good idea, Tess. Go ahead. Because all the recipes in this book are tagged to specific health goals, I, you know, daiquiris, are often completely full of sugar. This also has sweetener, but I decided to make a low-carb version of a daiquiri. So, you know, a traditional daiquiri is lime juice and... A lot of sugar, and, and so yeah. Forth. Typically, when you order fruit daiquiris, you know, obviously banana daiquiris were hugely popular, you know, in the, <laughs> the 70s and the 80s. People do strawberry daiquiris and pineapple daiquiris. So I just wanted to do something, use a fruit that was lower mm-hmm. in sugar. So I decided to use avocado... So it adds, Mm. you know, a slight creaminess to it, which is really beautiful, but you've still got the zestiness from the lime zest. So, you know, I just started with coconut water just to give it, you know, a bit more of an energy boosting quality and it's a slight sweetness as well. So I just started with one and a half cups of raw coconut water, lime zest, fresh lime juice, light rum, um, half a medium avocado. If you add any more avocado, you just, it gets too thick. It's more like a smoothie. A half a medium banana, which again adds a little bit of sweetness. Cointreau, a coconut nectar, pure maple syrup. So I'm using the banana, the coconut water, 
to add the sweetness instead of needing to add so much I like this approach. Yeah. And then you just add your ice cubes, you know, a cup of ice cubes, and then I'm garnishing it with some very, very thin lime slices. So you literally just throw everything in the blender except the lime slices. Every recipe in the book has three optional boosters. So if you're adding the boosters, you would throw in your teaspoon of wheatgrass powder, which you can't even taste, but it just adds, um, you know, a lot of chlorophyll to nutrition. You could also add spirulina. Now, most people hate those green powders, but put them in a cocktail and you can't even <laughs> I love you. You could also add a pinch of cayenne pepper because often when I'm doing zesty and sweet, I like to have a cutter, like particularly like with chocolate and things like that. But I think with zesty fruits, uh, cutters are really great. And the cayenne pepper stimulates the lymphatic system. It's great for detox. <laughs> it was really a bit of fun as well. So I like these cocktails that are kind of fruit or vegetable based because when there's not as much sugar, you don't you tend to feel sick the next day in some way. You know, I, I think there's less inflammation. Do you think so? Yeah, I mean, obviously where we've got alcohol in this recipe, so <laughs> alcohol is an inflammatory food. But yes, as a general rule, when you're eating, you know, low carb, non-starchy vegetables, leafy greens and so forth, these are fantastic alkaline forming, prebiotic promoting foods they're anti-inflammatory they're full of antioxidants yes so you do feel lighter it's also easier mm -hmm. on the digestive system because they're full of you know particularly avocados they're full of glutathione and other antioxidants they're just really they're really great for your health let's move on to the third recipe that we have on the site from you the book is this is tess masters we call her blender girl and her cookbook is called The Perfect Blend, as you'll see at foodschmooze.org. These blender recipes end up being gluten-free and vegan. They're about 100 uh, recipes. And a key to what Tess believes will be ingredients that are energizing, revitalizing, Always, when you say things like that, there's a huge debate that starts. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm also talking about things that you wouldn't imagine coming out of a blender. I'm talking about a lasagna. Oh. Um, a sweet potato and cashew dip, aromatic arugula, a cheesy zucchini chip thing. There's a red basil balsamic blast that mm -hmm. you could use as a dip for vegetables. Mm -hmm. On and on it goes. So the one I'm, I want to talk about and that we have on the site, minty peas, please. So mm -hmm. olive oil, yellow onion, cauliflower, vegetable broth, Iceberg lettuce that's chopped, green peas, frozen and then thawed, salt, mint leaves, and pepper. Okay, go ahead. Lay it on me. You know, mint and peas is just a classic combination that always pleases people. And it's delicious. And I mean, I think that this is a really fantastic hot or cold soup. So I wanted to include it, not only because it is really, really easy to throw together. You literally just saute the onion with some salt just for five minutes until it's soft and translucent. You add the cauliflower and the broth, you bring it all to a boil, and then you simmer it for about 10 minutes just until the cauliflower is tender. Then you add your lettuce and your peas, a little bit more salt, and just simmer for just a couple of minutes because we want it to be beautiful and vibrant green, mm. and peas just really don't need very mm. much cooking at all. Throw it in your blender, blend it up, and then you can choose to garnish it with a little bit of mint, a tiny bit of parsley, a little spritz of lemon juice, and you could put some sour cream on top. It's a, just a beautiful soup that you could serve at a summer party in little shot glasses. If you want to do like an appetizer, you could serve it, you know, as a starter. Or you could have it as a main and serve it with some crusty bread or a grain ball or something. And so, I just want to say to you that in terms of ingredients in these recipes, you're going to see that there's a lot of flavor power packed into these blender recipes. And I think that's what makes this work. Because sometimes, if you believe in this, these more healthful ingredients are just kind of left sitting there, and they, they're terrible tasting. This has got a lot of stuff wrapped around them. And yeah, so look, it's good. I think good. that's really important for me, because I think in a way, healthy food has to taste better than so-called, in inverted commas, unhealthy food. Because if the food isn't full in flavor, it's not absolutely beautiful, we're going to grab for those French fries. We're going to grab for the donuts. Things that, let's be honest, taste amazing, but they're empty calories. So when I'm creating recipes, they have to satisfy three basic criteria. They have to look gorgeous because we take the first bite with our eyes with anything in life, but particularly with food. It has to look beautiful, vibrant, exciting. It has to be 
functional, so it needs to be nutrient dense, full of great ingredients, but it has to be mind blowingly delicious. And I think you're right, when you read a recipe, you can put the flavors together in your mind. And for me, it has to taste incredible, or I just can't put it in my books because I want people to get excited about eating healthier food. Thank you so much for being on The Food Schmooze. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Tess Masters, author of The Perfect Blend. You'll find information about it at our website and the three recipes we discussed on the site also, foodschmooze.org. We're on WNPR Thursdays at 3 and Saturdays at noon. We have a podcast archive and weekdays listen for my 60-second Food Schmoozes. Never eat more than you can lift. In New Haven, I'm Faith Middleton. Thanks for listening to the podcast on your schedule. And when you need a little party in your life, we're here and online all the time at foodschmooze.org. And of course, also on Facebook at Faith Middleton Food Schmooze.